Hey, I'm Steven Kolchitsky, creator of Galicia Archives. In this video, I'm going to show you how to find documents like vital records and parish lists using the Metric Evoen website. Now, if you find this video helpful, you know how to support the channel. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so to start, let's go to the website wallin metriki.pl as is written in bold white up here in the address bar or click on the link that I left for you in the details section below the video. Now once you get to this site, the first thing you want to do, like always, is turn on your translator. Now here on top we see images. To go through them we could use the arrows on the left or right or click on the dots below the images. As we scroll down we see a menu on the left and the brief summary of the website or database. Here, close to the bottom, we have a short paragraph dedicated to thanking all the indexers that contributed to the website and an email address if you're interested in indexing. Then we have the name and email address of the person who runs this website. And underneath, we have two links, which we could go to by clicking on here. The top one being to the main search engine and that lower one being to the search engine made for parish lists. Next, contents. Here in the content section, we have a table of contents. For each parish, we have entries and or indexes. Explanations of those are up here. And we have their corresponding year ranges or separate years for births, weddings, deaths and parish lists. Now, if you want to look for a specific parish, we just do control F, put the name of the parish you're looking for, and it'll bring you there. Okay, next, if we scroll to the bottom, we have a list of all the indexers with their emails and initials. Now, these initials are kind of important because as we'll go on to the website, we'll see different entries with these initials, which will show you who did which entry. And by looking at this list, you could see that a lot of people contributed to this website. So let's be really, really grateful to all of them. Now, at any time, we could go up to the top of the page by clicking down here. And let's take a look at the next section, links. Now, the links section, as the name states, is a page dedicated to useful links. Here on top, we have links to two different catalogs of Roman Catholic metrical books for different parishes and their locations spanning over a range of different archives. So let's look at the first one as an example. And to open it, I'm going to do so in a separate tab by clicking on the right key of my mouse and selecting Open Link in New Tab. Now just keep one thing in mind, the document, even though our translator is turned on, it still stays in Polish, it doesn't translate. Now, as we scroll down, we have our little table of contents with different church names or parishes and the pages they're on. A map. And as we get down to page 10, we have a list of abbreviations for a few words and for the archives in which all these metrical books are found, along with the English translations that I put up for you. And keep one thing in mind, these abbreviations will be important because they will be your reference to where certain documents are found. And now let's go to page 13. Here we have our first parish or church. In most cases, the author was even kind enough to add pictures. Underneath the picture, we have in Polish information on the church, for example, history and so on. Remember, if you want to translate some of this, you could always select, copy, open up a new tab, go to Google Translate and put it in your translator. If we go down to the next page, here on top we see Miejscowości, which means villages, and we'll have them written both in Polish and in Ukrainian. Then underneath that we have a table, which states in the first column which archive the document is found in. The second column tells us the specific year or year range. Then we have baptisms, marriages and deaths, along with their corresponding archival number. And remember, as I said in some of my other videos, the three numbers in the archival number represent font, description, and case. So just keep that in mind. And as we scroll down below the chart, we have also parish list and the corresponding year and archival number. And below that, we have premarital exam. 
as well as the year ranges and archival number. So if I want to find this parish's records, for example, for 1904 to 1908, well, I know the archival number is 171175. And the archive, Dahmo, well, if I go back to page 10, here I see it's the archive of Mielnitsky. So now, keeping that in mind, if we go back to our links, here we have access to scans of record books online. So I'm going to click here and it brings us to another page on where we could find scans. So let's go through the list. Here we go, Dahmo. And we have two links, one for the official archives website and the second one to the Wikisource website. I'm going to open the first one in a separate tab. And my archival number was 171185, archive online. I'm going to go to fund 17, description one. That brings us to 171. And I'm going to look for 185. There we go, 185. See up here, 171185, the archival number. And here we go, 1904 to 1908, Cathedral Church. And these are the records for this church. Okay, so let's close this as well as this. And while we're here, let's scroll down a little lower. Look, these are all different archives and so on with their affiliated scans. Here, the last link at the bottom, it's not clickable. So for this one, you could either right key of your mouse and click on go to and it'll bring you to this link in a separate tab and just real quick look at all the different parishes that are found here as well or you could physically copy open a new tab paste the link in google and you're on your way okay let's go back and as we scroll down we have maps a check search engine and a whole bunch of other links that are really really useful so take some time and look at this. Okay, let's go back to the top and let's go to English. Now English is basically a small summary of this website, but in English, since the entire website is in Polish. Next, we have Spisa Parafian, which is in Polish because since I'm here, the translator turned off. And here we have list of parishioners or a parish list underneath we have a town index but be careful of one thing watch out with your translator because look here adamovka 1912 and the parish name he swallows so the translator literally translates what it understands so you might want to consider putting this back to polish if you're looking for a certain parish because if you're looking for a wicca copy if I put this to English and I'm going to do a find on a Wicca, here it's going to bring me to one of several Wiccas that did not translate. But if I go back to the top, here where it's originally a Wicca, my find search didn't find it. So this is one small example that could happen for different parishes or villages. Okay, close this. I'll put this back to Polish for a moment. And since we were looking at Adamówka 1912, well, let's click on its link and it brings you to a page like this. So here on the left hand side, we have the house number, which I'll go over in a moment. These aren't the right numbers. Then we have the numbering system for men and women. So here we have the first man in this count, then the first woman in this count, then the second man in this count and so on and so forth for each sex. Then we have the age if it's a man and if it's a woman, the parish name as well as the town. Then we have the year, the name of the archives where the document is found. Here's the person who did the indexing and here's signature, that's the archival number. So let's say for example here, we want to find Grzegorz Swodkowski. Well, I'll go to the link for the Zhitkomir archives and I'm going to look for 178.49.52. So let's do that now. I'll select the website, control C, open a new tab, control V, enter, and I'll go to my links. 
and down to my scans and down to Jitcomir. Here we go. So if I click on the first link, well, this is what I get. So I'll get out of here. And if I click on the second link, it brings me to the Wikisource website. And look what I have up here. That's Ho, which is my Jitcomir archives and font 178. So now I want 178, 49, 52. I'm going to go down to 49. Now up here, 178, 49. So let's go to 52. And here we see Owick Parish. We click on this picture and we could flip through the pages by clicking next page and continuously clicking next or previous. Or I could click on the image and it brings me to the records, but in a PDF file. There we go. And if I go to page 83, here we have Adamovka. And if I go back here, Grzegorz Słodkowski. Here we have our Słodkowski Krehori. Now notice here on the left hand side, what's supposed to represent the address or the house number. Well, here we have one, two, and three and so on. Well, here the addresses aren't numerated the same way. Here we see for this entire family in address or house number one, here we have them all under address number 494. And the reason for this is because to make it easier for us to find this person, the indexers put the house number or the address as this family's position in this entire document. So if the house number is important to you, well, look at the number that's given in the actual document and not over here. And here on top, we have kind of like a search engine. So if we want to put a different village or parish or even year range, well, we could put those informations here, submit, and it'll bring us to those files if they exist. Also, if we go back here on top of the page, we have information about scans of books, which brings you back where you could find scans and our search engine for lists in the database, which brings you here. Okay, let's get out of here and let's go to archives. Here we have kind of an informative list of where parish metrical books are stored according to year and type of records. Here on top, we have abbreviations. And as we go down, we have the parish name and baptisms, weddings, deaths, parish lists. We have in which archives the records are found for the coinciding year ranges. And again, over here, you could do control F to find a certain village that you're looking for. So if I do Alexandria, there we go. Okay, let's go back to the top and let's go to variety. Here, you'll find various documents and articles related to Bowen. And at the end of every paragraph, you have a link going to a document of what's described in the paragraph. So you could go through, for example, this one here, in the baptism book and so on, you click on the link and it brings you to more information on that. Okay. Now let's go to search engine. Here we have a search engine to do a general search. So whatever information you have, you could put here. I'm going to put, for example, Jacek Kowalski. Submit. And here we have zero results, but it gives me the opportunity to show you the layout you get in the results. So here you get death, birth by vows. It means marriages by censuses. That means parish lists. And we have the given information in the headers of each section. So in the first one, you have day, month, year, and so on and so forth. Now, if I go back, take off Yatsik, 
to do a general search on the name Kowalski. I get a lot of results as you see here. And as we scroll down to our results, well, we have the information that are in the headers. And at the end, well, we have scan with the links for those who have. Okay, let's get out of here. And the last two parts that I didn't go over, Facebook brings you to the Metric Evoin Facebook page. So I encourage you to give them a thumbs up. And contact brings you directly to Pani Danuta's email address. And that, my friends, in a nutshell, is how to use the Metric Evoin website. Well, I hope you liked this video. I hope it helped you find someone that you're looking for. If so, please let me know in the comment section below. Do subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. And I hope to see you all in the next video.